Hello and welcome to Basic Computer Help. Today I'm going to be reviewing the Microsoft, I'm sorry, the Windows Live uh, Suite. Okay. First thing I want to do is complain about Windows Live uh, Movie Maker. This is the new Movie Maker that they plan to release later this year. Oh. The Windows Live Suite at the moment is beta, and if you got Vista, a lot of these are planning. They're planning on replacing the originals with this. So this is Windows Movie Maker, the beta of it. It's now called Windows Live Movie Maker. This is literally how you edit a video, and I'm gonna go into here select a video. Uh, but this is how you trim it. And see how you got no timeline, nothing. This is how you trim it. You go to edit, trim, and find a spot of the video. And then you drag in the beginning and the end down. Save, and now I got a 31 second video. As far as I know, you, nope, you cannot split the video at all. Another another thing is, you know, you can mute it, but what if you I wanted to like split the video and add a picture in the middle of it. Say I was covering a news topic or something and wanted to show an image of what I was talking about. You can't really do that. Visual effects, you have even less visual effects. You have six visual effects here, and only three transitions here, instead of however many they had before. So this is really a crappy idea. And look at their options. General, it just give send feedback, and and then the trust center, which all you can do is allow Microsoft to collect information. Another problem I have is if you delete the image off the timeline with a delete key, well, it didn't do it this time, but a, a lot of times Windows Movie Maker will crash. No. The next thing I'm going to is uh, Windows Live Messenger. I can't complain too much here. Yeah, it, it's just an improvement in style. That's all I can think of. I like it. And Windows Live Photo Gallery. Yes, this is pretty good. It's better. Yeah, it works similar. One thing that's good is you can actually upload it to um, Windows Live Online, whichever one, whatever they call their photo sharing site. Alright. Now the one thing I plan to review the most of the time is Windows Live Writer. Now, I'm not a big fan of offline blog writers, but this is actually pretty good. I now use it primarily to write in all of my three blogs. And, and, it's much better than bloggers online thing, in my opinion. It does have its drawbacks, and I'll explain those in a minute. Alright, this is what I like. Uh, let's put in some text and you can go into source and it's actually co uh, encloses them in paragraph tags another good thing is I can enclose something in break tags well not enclose it but break a line uh, test text text and I can actually it'll actually preview it like this and it'll also refactor the source code so that it looks better it's also good when you add a link I'll add a link whoops to my blog all about william.blogspot.com see it automatically makes it hyper, a hyperlink Go to next and it'll put it inside of a hyperlink that is fully standards compliant. Now let's 
a lot of times I like to sign my blog post. So let's sign it uh, right aligned with bold and italics. It'll actually go a uh, paragraph and align the paragraph to the right and make it strong and emphasize it. Whereas in Blogger, we'll actually encase them in spans, and the spans can get really long. And it's a pain, it's actually a pain when you have to edit the source code, like I do a lot. To enter a title, up here where it says enter a post title, you enter your title here. Now, every once in a while, I use Control S to save the draft. And it'll save it over here in my drafts. If you want to edit the title in the source view, all you have to do is just edit it up here. See? Done. Another thing I like is when you first set it up, it'll ask you for your blog. You, you know, to set up your blog. And then it'll make a post on your blog. And then uh, take an image of your blog. And then delete the test post that it made. And here's how it looks when I preview. Um. Oh, excuse me. Um. It, it deletes all the JavaScripts. And embeds. So. Uh. Let's say I want to add a YouTube video. This actually sounds like a good idea. You just copy the YouTube URL and automatically make it an embed. It it makes it into this kind of hard to read dev tag and puts it only in an embed, which is not actually a problem. Um, but I, let's say I wanted to change its height to 400 for one unknown reason or another and make this 500 edit it goes back to that way 425 to 355 it automatically changes it back so to actually embed a YouTube video I usually just copy this embed and copy it directly into the source That way, you know, I can edit it the way I want it to be edited. And if you really wanted to, you can actually delete the object and the params. Whoops, embed. So that you only have this. And I'll post in a in the description box the uh, API documentation for embedding YouTube videos so that you can add and remove stuff um, and then you got the preview which, which also makes it fully functioning. Any HTML you put in your post, any embed you put in your post will also be previewing previewed in here. Okay. And, and then to publish it, you just click publish in the top corner. Now, if you're like me and have multiple blogs, to add a blog, all you have to do is come into the top corner up here, go all the way down to add a add blog and then follow the options on the screen. Like I had to go add another blog service, type in the address, my username and my password, and then it takes a few minutes as it makes a test, vi uh, a test post.